Hey family, oh, welcome, oh, welcome back to my channel. I am Carinza Amanza. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you all are doing so good and definitely enjoying your day or your evening. So today I'm going to be doing a video on five easy ways to get your finances in order. So it is April, 2022. It is Financial Literacy Month. And during this month, I decided to start a series called Budget and Finance. So I'll be giving you tips and advice on how to get your finances in order as well as simple and easy ways to live a financially prosperous lifestyle. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with the basics. Yes, we all know that we need a budget. We need to know how much money we have coming in monthly. We also need to know how much all of our bills and our expenses are. That includes our fixed expenses as well as our variable expenses. But it's so much deeper than that. It's so much deeper than just telling your money where to go. You actually have to do continuous operations throughout the month each and every day to keep your finances in order. So I'm going to start with the basics. So it is important that you have these different types of accounts. You need to have your basic checking account. And that is basically an account where your monthly income goes into, whether that be monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, or bi-monthly. Your household and personal bills and expenses need to come out of that checking account. So you have to make sure that you keep that checking account in good standing so you do not have any fees or any money owed on that account. You pay all of your bills and your household expenses, your personal bills out of that account, and you make sure that you pay your bills on time. You budget accordingly. You withdraw money if you need to, if you're doing the cash envelope system. And you also make sure that you have enough money in there, which is called a buffer account, a buffer money, excuse me, to make sure that if anything happens, you have additional funds in that account to cover any unexpected expenses or occurrences. So next, you also want to have a savings account. Now, your savings account can be your starter $1,000 or $2,000 emergency fund where you have money readily accessible if you need it. So if that means you have an equipment to catch a quick flight somewhere, you have that money available. If you have to fix something on your car or if you need new tires or an oil change and you didn't account for that expense, you have money in your savings account so that will cover it. If it's a medical expense that you need to take care of that is not covered by your insurance, you have that money available as well. So making sure you have a checking account and a savings account at a regular local bank is very helpful. Next, you wanna have a high yield savings account. Now this high yield savings account is an account where you will hold six months to one year of your expenses. So this is gonna be where you will have all of your funds available in the event you have some type of life-changing situation. So the, whether that be you starting a family, whether you are experiencing some type of job loss or health issues that takes away from you being able to work, you have money set aside from six months to a year, so you will not have to worry about how you're going to maintain your lifestyle for you and your loved ones. Next, I want to say a Roth IRA. So a Roth individual retirement account is an individual retirement account that you can open up yourself. You do not need to open it through your job. So I would say making sure that you understand that the maximum is $6,000 that you are able to invest in this individual retirement account every year. So basically you decide how much you are able to afford based on your budget and you figure out how much you wanna contribute. The max that you can contribute is $6,000 for the year. However, it does not have to be $6,000 for the year. You can literally invest in how much you want as long as it's up to 6,000. Make sure you do your own proper research. Make sure you understand what you are investing in and make sure you understand that it's deeper than just you putting money into that account. You actually have to invest in a particular investment 
products. So whether that be a stock or index funds, whether that be um, a mutual fund, you have to do your own research and figure out exactly what it is that you want to invest in and never invest your money into something that you just do not understand. It just doesn't make sense. So next, I would say have your own brokerage account. Now, this is going to be a separate investment account where you can invest in anything that you want, and that is for your future as well. So I would say this brokerage account could be more for like a medium or a long-term growth. You will treat it as if it is an investment tool that's going to help you build your financial portfolio. So again, making sure that you do your own proper research and investing your money into things that you understand, companies and organizations that align with your financial goals makes the most sense. So I'm going to say that is all number one opening and funding those accounts. Next, I'm gonna go on to review all of your debt. You need to review all of your debt. You need to write down everything that you owe. You need to know the creditor. You need to know the amount that you owe and the interest rate. I would definitely say you need to come up with a plan that makes the most sense. Now, if you wanna start out with making a one-year plan, making sure that you pay off each debt one at a time, I would say start with the smallest debt and work your way up. So write down each debt, write down the balance, write down the interest, write down the amount, making sure you understand. Start with the smallest balance that you owe. Decide how long it's gonna take yourself to pay that off. And every time you pay that off, you move on to the next debt and to the next debt until you have no more. That is known as the snowball method of paying off debt. A lot of people use it and I think it's a great way to have small wins. And I feel like it's a great way to show yourself the discipline that you need to get out of debt. Another option will be the reverse, and that is called the debt avalanche method. That's another great way. However, I prefer the debt snowball. So next, I would say it's important for you to know what is on your credit report. So obtain your free credit report at annualcreditreport.com. It's important that you review your credit report and make sure there are no discrepancies on there. And if there is, make sure that you look into it and make sure that you get to the creditors as fast as you can. So that might be you writing a letter or you going online and speaking to someone at the three major credit bureaus making sure that you clear your name and understanding that it might take some time, but you will have to stay on top of it to get any issues off of your credit. So the next thing I would say is you need to have a spreadsheet or you need to write down all of your bills and their due dates, whether that be on a calendar, on your laptop computer, whether it's print and paper on your budget, your budget binder or your budget planner, you need to know when every bill is due. You do not want to have to take any extra money to pay off any bills or any fees related to paying any late bills if it's not necessary. Paying your bill on time is very crucial and important if you definitely want to maintain good credit. So keep that in mind as well. And then last but not least, I'm going to say this. Now, I think it's important to invest in life insurance. So there's two types of life insurance policies. There's the whole life and then there's term life. Term life is a type of insurance that guarantees payment um, at a stated death benefit in the, if, the cur if the covered person dies. So you are literally um, going to get um, your policy based on what works for you. So there's the term and then there's whole life. Whole life is more so known as traditional life insurance and that provides permanent life insurance um, for the death benefit covered for the life of the insured. So the term life is based on a specific time frame. That's why it's called term. And then whole life is for the whole traditional life insurance. But if you really think about it, they both have time limits. Make sure you read the fine print. Make sure you understand what it is that you are paying for because some of these life insurance companies are scams. So I would definitely say do your research. 
understand what you are investing in because everything that you spend your money on, it has some type of either benefit, return, or nothing at all. And you don't want to spend all of your money into something and realize that you get nothing at the end. So make sure you understand those life insurance policies. Make sure you have someone with experience who has your best interest at heart. Make sure you do not get involved with any of these scams. Only you can look out for the best interest of you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Those were my five easy ways to get your finances in order. It is springtime. It is a brand new season. It is a brand new quarter. What a great time to get your financial health in order. Take care and be safe. Thank you all so much. Till next time. Bye.